We are on pace for what's shaping up to be a huge year in mergers and acquisitions. One of the biggest drivers these days is debt financing. For more on this trend, we're joined by our senior M&A analyst right here at Bloomberg, Ian Atawuya. Ian, we're almost halfway through the year. Where do we stand? Well, it's pretty incredible. Right now we have a trillion dollars, so we've broke the trillion dollar mark for deal volume this year, and we're not even half of the year yet. However, the untold story is that if you look at deal count, it's essentially flat with exactly where we were last year. So just so bigger bigger ticket prices. It's, it's just bigger ticket prices. The only difference this year is that you already have nine mega deals, deals above $10 billion announced this year, whereas you had nine mega deals all of last year. And secondly, you have the percentage of contribution of private equity deals this year up 18 percent versus where it was last year that's the only difference so we're not quite back to the heyday of 2006 2007 but we're certainly way above where we were in 2008 and as you point out 2009 2010 don't break out the champagne don't break out the champagne just yet i mentioned as we as i introduced you that uh, debt financing has been a big factor in mergers and acquisitions thus far this year. And that does feel a bit like we're returning to the days of the mid-1990s. Credit conditions we know from the Fed, its report on banking, are easing. Banks are more willing to loan money. And leverage loans were a big factor in, in many of the uh, mergers and acquisitions taking place. Let's talk about some of the underlying uh, data points that, that help to tell that story. You really do raise a good, uh, a, a good issue there because when you look at debt financing and you look at the M&A market as a fire, debt financing is the accelerant to this fire. And so if you look at loan issuance this year, it's up 145% for M&A financing. And when you look at loan issuance for leveraged buyouts, which private equity firms do, it's up over 250%. However, it's not time to panic yet and say we're going back to the pre-crisis era because if you look compared to where it was in 2007, it's still below, it's about 33% below where it was in pre-crisis levels. It's still enough of an issue for concern that Janet Yellen at the Federal Reserve actually mentioned that the Fed is actually watching this and looking for signs of imbalances between demand and supply in the financing market for M&A and LBO deals. And it, it merits pointing out that leveraged loans were one of the first areas of weakness on bank balance sheets as we went into the credit crisis. It turned out that things like mortgage-backed securities and CDOs ended up being a much bigger deal. But it is a factor and probably explains why Absolutely. one of the reasons why Janet Yellen is concerned. Um, are we seeing any signs, though, that maybe the willingness of investors to pony up for high-yield bonds and for leveraged loans is beginning to wane? High-yield spreads have been backing up a little bit, and at least according to Standard & Poor's, seven companies that plan to raise money, including Orbitz, in the leveraged loan market in the last couple of weeks had to cancel those deals. You're seeing investors starting to get a little choosier about what they're going for, because Covlite loans came back much quicker than we expected. And if you look at... Uh, These are at, loans with much easier terms for the borrower. Yes, And ultimately, are. as a result, negatively for the... Uh, for the for the credit for the lender for, for, for the lender and so where you, when you look at where we are and you see that that spreads are back I, I think about 19 basis points uh, since since March. you know what I think we actually have a chart that we can show people to show wh what's going on with high yield spreads and uh, so high yield spreads are where they are, are are creeping back to where the extra protection that investors are demanding in order to borrow some of these uh, riskier loans and, and lend these riskier loans is creeping back up and and so, and justifiably so, because as soon as there's weakness in the market, these things are the first to get touched. And then the consequent impact on M&A, I mean, we know that there's a lot of cash on balance sheets, so companies can finance deals with cash, and they, obviously, the opportunity still exists to do a deal with stock alone, but think of a deal, mega deals, really, often require debt. Uh, AT&T buying T-Mobile USA, there's a $20 billion loan being underwritten by J.P. Morgan. That deal couldn't get done Absolutely. without the debt. And another, uh, another great case study of this is a deal that was announced earlier this week. So you had Ashland go out there and buy ISP for $3.2 billion dollars. This is a company that has an entire enterprise value of $5 billion doing a $3.2 billion deal. And how do they finance it? They're able to get four, three or four banks to pony up $2.9 billion of the $3.2 billion to finance this deal. And of course, they were able to get it out syndicated because the markets are very robust right now. But you start to be concerned when you see even strategics really pulling their muscle and starting to try to finance revenue uh, growth through debt. Well, you know, there's an old saying, right? Why spend a dollar of your own if you can spend you a dollar of somebody else. else's money? All right, Ian, great to have you <laughs> here you. on the Deal Desk. Ian Adewunya, 
senior M&A analyst right here at Bloomberg.